Hello students and welcome back to our tutoring session. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you back. Looks like everyone returned, but it does look like I see someone new today. Well, hello, Hank. Nice to meet you, Hank. And welcome to our tutoring session. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate you bringing Hank with you today. My name is Miss Bishop, and today I will continue to talk about heart failure tutoring sessions. After this session, you will be able to discuss the pathophysiology of heart failure, understand the mechanism of action of ACE inhibitors, list at least five ACE inhibitors, state the side effects of ACE inhibitors, and restate information and education and instructions that you need to teach your nurses, your family, your patient, and nursing students in reference to ACE inhibitors. Let's talk about pathophysiology. With each heartbeat, the heart pumps blood from the body into the lungs to pick up oxygen. However, in heart failure, the heart is not able to pump a sufficient amount of blood to the organs. Also, the injection fracture is reduced in heart failure. If you look at my diagram here, it talks about what happens in heart failure. You have decreased cardiac performance, increased water, and sodium retention. And this is related to impaired renal function. When you have a problem with your renal function, then you retain water and sodium. Decreased cardiac output, diminished flow, and decreased renal perfusion. This all happens in heart failure. Let's review what we learned from our previous tutoring sessions in reference to heart failure. First of all, who can tell me what causes heart failure? John, very good John. We talked about smoking, diabetes, hypertension. That's correct. What else? Mike? Right, it's genetic. That is correct. That is correct. We also talked about the difference between modifiable and non-modifiable risk. Who can tell me the difference? Yes, Misha, modifiable is what you can change. For example, exercising, you can change your diet. That's correct. Non-modifiable is what you can't change. For example, your age, your genetic, history and your race or your gender. You're not able to change those, that's correct. We also discussed the difference between right side heart failure and left side heart failure. Who can tell me the symptoms and the difference of the two? John, that's correct, John. In the right side of heart failure, you have the distended jug vein, jugular vein that shows weight gain, dependent edema, which means in the lower extremities. And the left side of heart failure, you have shortness of breath, crackles, and cough. That's correct. And what do we talk about the treatment for heart failure? Right, we talked about there were diuretics and we talked about ACE inhibitors. We will focus on ACE inhibitors today. ACE inhibitors widen and dilate your blood vessels. This helps to increase the blood flow to your heart. This is why doctors prescribe ACE inhibitors. Who can remember the two different ACE inhibitors that we talked about? Right, Mike, we talked about captopril and lisinopril. Can you tell me some of the comparisons and the differences between the two? That's right, Misha. Both of them prevent angiotensin 1 from converting to angiotensin 2. That is correct. What else? What was that, Mike? That's right, Mike. They both interact with alcohol and lithium. All right. Who can tell me some of the differences? Sally. That's right. Captopril has an interaction with potassium sparing diuretics. That's right. That's right. Also, that is correct, Sally, but lisinopril has an interaction with alnopurinol and aspirin. It decreases the effect of aspirin. Very good. You guys are remembering. What else can you tell me? 
Right, John, right. Captopril is for the left ventricular dysfunction, whereas lisinopril is for mild to moderate hypertension. I'm proud of you guys. You're doing great. You're doing great. What else? A few more things. How about precautions? Right. That's right. Hank. All right, Hank. That's right. Precautions in dialysis is with captopril and precautions for renal diagnosis with lisinopril. That's right. But both of them are precautions in pregnancy. That is correct. Can we remember when we compare prices? Who can remember? That's correct. The captopril was cheaper. Very good, guys. Very good. All right, and we talked about ACE inhibitors preventing the conversion from angiotensin 2 from angiotensin 1. Very good. Examples of ACE inhibitors. Who can tell me what they all have alike? And we learned this from my last session. That's right, Sally. They all end in pril. They all end in pril. If you look at they all end in pril. Benazapril, captopril, enalapril. Okay, they all end in pril. Lisinopril. Very good. Some of the adverse reactions for ACE inhibitors are hyperkalemia, high serum creatinine, dry mouth, dyspnea, dry, irritating, non-productive cough. But the most important thing I want to talk about is angioedema. Angioedema is swelling under the skin, of the mouth, and where else swelling can there be that would cause this to be a life-threatening situation? That's right, Misha, in the throat in the throat. Very good. Some of the education and instructions that we need to teach patients, family, nurses, nursing students, monitor potassium and creatinine level because these patients have kidney problems. Do not stop taking medication abruptly. Continue to monitor blood pressure. Report difficulty breathing. Be familiar with signs and symptoms of angioedema because it could be life-threatening. monitor kidney function. These are some of the information that we must teach family and nurses and nursing students. It's time to try to evaluate how you guys have done and what you have understood. So we're going to take a little short quiz and we can all answer together. The heart normally pumps blood sufficiently to the body and organs, but in heart failure, the heart is unable to pump blood to meet the needs of the body. Is that correct? True or false? That is correct. That is true. The heart cannot pump blood sufficiently, and we discussed that. Patients with normal injection fracture are treated with ACE inhibitors. Who remembers? Right, Misha, it's for reduced injection fracture that patients are treated with ACE inhibitors. Very good. Who can give me five examples of ACE inhibitors? You can work together and give it to me. Right, captopril, that's right. Lisinopril, that's right. Ramopril, that is correct. Benazapril, that's correct. One more. Enalapril, very good, guys, very good. What are some of the teaching points that we need to teach patients and families for ACE inhibitors? That's right, Misha. Monitor your blood pressure. Anybody else? Right. Nurses need to monitor kidney function. Correct. Along with kidney function, monitor potassium. That's right. Very good. Very good. Anything else? Report signs and symptoms of angioedema. Very good. There's over 6.5 million people that are affected with heart failure. And patients with injection fractures are treated with what? ACE inhibitors, that's correct. And studies show that mortality and morbidity is reduced in patients with heart failure when treated with ACE inhibitors. That's all folks. Thank you guys. I will see you next time in tutoring.
unless you have any questions for me. That's a good question, Misha. We must always make sure we tell patients about signs and symptoms of angioedema because it can be life-threatening. Thank you guys. See you next time.